Iowa fans pouring across the state line into Illinois to call the Hawks tonight in the mark of the Quad Cities in Moline, Illinois. As the DePaul Blue Demons take on the Iowa Hawkeyes. And good evening everyone, Jim Durham with John Sunbold and welcome to our matchup tonight. Boy, the place is really alive here in Moline. As we get ready for this ball game, we've got two teams playing very well late in the season. Although two teams are different in makeup. DePaul more of a veteran team. Well, like you said, Jim, both clubs have played well towards the end. Both are bubble teams. Iowa is a young ball club. DePaul more senior late. When you're a senior, every game is your last one when you put the uniform on. Speaking of seniors for DePaul, Tom Kleinsmith, leading scorer, third in rebounding, leading assist player. He can score from the inside, he can score from the outside. The problem is, this morning, Kleinsman woke up and he had the flu bug. That's a problem. He did eat the team meal, by the way, tonight, so perhaps he's okay. As for the Iowa Hawkeyes, they're a young, energetic bunch. They like to get it and go and shoot from long distance. Well, move the lines back because there's a kid named Chris Kingsbury. He will shoot the three-pointer, and I tell you what, his range is unlimited. He has had ball games where he's made nine three-pointers. He has shot 90 in the last nine ball games. He will catch it. He will shoot it, and the Hawkeyes will run. We have a wonderful atmosphere for college basketball tonight. We'll be back with tonight's game as on this night, Iowa calls Illinois. Thousand on hand at the mark of the Quad Cities here in Moline. And we're ready for the Wolverine starting lineups tonight for Joey Meyer and the DePaul Blue Demons. In the backcourt will be Peter Patton teaming with Brandon Cole. Brandon Cole, another one of the seniors on this club. Who knows? It's Russian roulette time, right? Well, Cole's been on a roll. 23 points average in the last four ball games. As for Dr. Tom Davis and the Iowa Hawkeyes, their starting five consists of five guys who average in the double figures. And Jess Settles has been mighty impressive since coming back from an injury. Well, Settles, last year, Big Ten freshman of the year. This year, he has had back problems. Sat out a few ball games that cost this Hawkeye ball club some losses. But he's back and playing better. And the tip controlled by Iowa. The Paul will play predominantly man-to-man. -man. They are going to have to get up on that young man, Kingsbury, because he can let it go from way long distance. Oh, his range is limitless. Shot clock down to 20. The Hawkeyes working the perimeter. This is Woolridge, and Brandon Cole is guarding him. They work it underneath to Kingsbury, and it's kicked in by Settles. And right away, the Hawkeyes go full court press. That's Tom Davis basketball. DePaul will have to handle the pressure. Kleinsmith, very important in fact on that. DePaul somewhat used to pressure defenses, having just played Cincinnati, but they play it differently. Bartles makes the steal of an interior pass, and Iowa looking to extend the lead. There's a quick three. Well, traditionally, Tom Davis will run a motion-type offense. They'll run the old flex offense. They will press you, and they will throw it up. They will shoot it when they're open. Everyone has a green light for this ball club. Peter Patton. Iowa the rebound. Settles to Woolridge. Oh, nice behind the back move by Woolridge. Bartles for three. He's knocked out two in a row. Brandon Cole beats some pressure and draws the foul. Personal foul whistled against Kenyon Murray. You know, one thing about pressure defense, once you break it, you then have to make a decision. Do you take it all the way? Do you pull it back out? The difference sometimes is the fact that you break it with a point guard and you have a four and five man on the offensive end. That's unusual because your normal break, you have a two guard and a small forward with you. So DePaul will have to make the right decisions against the Hawkeyes. The Hawkeyes want them to shoot quick shots. Brandon Cole with the first DePaul point of the night after Iowa opened with eight in a row. Okay. 
Paul as a team shoots free throws very well, but they did not in their great Midwest tournament game against Cincinnati. They make a few free throws against Cincinnati. They win that ball game, and then they advance on in their tournament action and possibly an NCAA bid. And now it's DePaul with some pressure. They knock it loose. Patton comes away with a steal. In the collision, we get an offensive foul call on Peter Patton. Patton doesn't like the call. DePaul surprised the Hawkeyes in a half-court trap. They picked it up. Kingsbury looks like he's sliding a little bit. Patton might have been right. Take a look at this call. Anyway, the uh, turnover, the ball going to Iowa, the Hawkeyes who led the Big Ten in turnover ratio. Iowa coming on strong to finish 19 and 11. The Hawkeyes won six of their last nine. DePaul won nine of its last 12. DePaul again forcing a turnover. And the outlet picked off by Bartles. Murray. Kingsbury. Good defense by Cole that time on Kingsbury. Kingsbury won't let it go. Cole, too close to him. Six-point lead for Iowa. Settles, missed on the three, and the rebound to Patton. Here's Kleinschmidt. Macon. And a hell ball. And Settles ties up Macon. Good defense possession saves though with DePaul. Kleinsman, we're gonna have to watch. Take a look at the defense right here by Jeff Settles. Gets his hands on the ball strong enough to stay on the basketball. DePaul with the ball down by six. I can't imagine there being much more noise over in the Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City, about 60 miles away, than we have here tonight. Cole for three. And the foul by Kleinsman. Good job by Brian Bowden to keep that ball alive, attacking the glass. Kleinsmith, the benefactor. Woolridge. Great shooting start for Iowa. Up court pass, Woolridge the steal. Oh, what a pass. Settles. It's that frantic pace that Iowa thrives on. Well, Four minutes in, they've got it going. The ball has gotten the ball in quickly, but they forced it away on the, their offensive end of the court. Bowden able to score. Bryant Bowden with his first basket. And it's a six-point lead for the Hawkeye. The flex offense. They pick, and then they'll pick down, swing the basketball. A lot of movement. This is really an old-fashioned style offense. Teams run this even in the junior high school level. A few times they work it inside Murray on the miss, but Settles comes down with a rebound. All five guys for Iowa look to pull the trigger when they catch the basketball. And all five starters average in double figures, as we mentioned. They, they none of them are basketball, as uh, John says. They look to shoot out of bounds to DePaul. Take a look at the break. Andre Woolridge on the pat. Terrific bounce pass. Settles all by himself. That's how you run a fast break. Woolridge, a transfer from Nebraska, was outstanding as a freshman for Danny, Danny Knee's ball club over in the Cornhusker State. Transferred here, sat out a year ago, has been very valuable to Tom Davis's ball club. There's an update on the uh, other NIT games that are going on tonight. Penn State with a win tonight over Miami. A big come from behind win for the Nittany Lions. Here, Iowa has changed its entire lineup with the exception of Kingsbury. He stays in. And DePaul has made a change. This is Watts. Number 11 made the drive and is fouled going in. Before the shot. I think they're going to call Curry on an offensive foul. Ah. Holding. That's it. It's on Brian Curry and a timeout taken. A quick start by Iowa. They lead it by six. Should be a good one. This is Glasper controlling for Iowa. Guarded by Watts. Watts who broke his nose last week in a practice. There's a protective face guard. 
18 to shoot. Plenty of time. This is Kingsbury. Kleinschmidt closes out on him. Great defense. Meister falling down, making the turn, but they get the bounce. Bowden with the block. The shot clock has expired, and it's a shot clock violation. Good interior defense by Bowden that time. Glasper got rid of the basketball, made the pass. Bowden made the block, didn't get it off. They throw behind the defense to Cole. Brandon Cole in on Bowen. Cole has his first field goal, four points scored for him. You know, through all the excitement and all the hoopla, DePaul is only down four. Kingsbury for three. Rebound ripped out of there by the Blue Demons. The outlet nearly stolen. Cole controls. Klein Schmidt drags past Kingsbury. Gets it blocked. Bowden keeps it alive for Cole for three. And Iowa the rebound. Carter took it down. Glasper on ahead to Kingsbury. Oh, nice look underneath to Skillet. Nice break that time by Iowa. DePaul not getting back, and the guys who did get back, no one guarded the basket. You know, John, we've talked a lot about Iowa's three-point shooting. DePaul shoots it pretty well from three-point range. Well, they do, and that's the guy they want to get going early. We talked about him having the flu bug. I asked him before the game how he felt. He said, well, not very well, but I'll do what I can. Outstanding. He's an All-American honorable mention, AP poll. Take a look, as Iowa pushes the basketball, DePaul does not get back and guard the basket. That's the first thing you have to de defend. Skillet was an easy one. Six point advantage for Iowa. Woolridge back into the lineup for the Hawkeyes. Watts guards him. Will Macon has come back in for DePaul and Bryant Bowden goes out of the lineup. You can see how the spacing is for Iowa. They try to keep the paint area a little bit open. Free their shooters up and free their cutters up. Terrell on the shot clock. Warwick. Bowen blocked by Curry, but Warwick follows it in. DePaul once again breaks the press easily. And it's out of bounds to DePaul. You know, DePaul right now not having a hard time initially with the press. It's when they break it and they get in a hurry. That time, Feinsmith lost it off the dribble, but regained possession. But they just aren't handling it cleanly on their offensive end. When you want to play at the pace that Iowa wants to play, there are certain things you'll give up. You'll give up some layups, as evidenced by their defensive field goal percentage, which, you know, is pretty high. Well, at 48%, you hate to give up that kind, but you will give up layups. What they rely on is turnover. Brandon Cole with a pass into the middle, and it's stolen. Woolridge. Oh, terrific. Bowen. That Andre. was Bartles. That's his first two. Andre Woolridge once again with a terrific bounce pass on the three-on-two break. Bartles with eight points in the game, two threes, and a two-point goal. It's a ten-point lead for Iowa. Iowa now a 3-2 zone with Klein Smith out of there. They will focus defensively on that man Singer, who's a shooter. And he knocks it down for three. Marcus Singer. You have to know who the shooters are if you go to a zone defense. Singer and Cole will hurt you with this lineup. Iowa looking inside, but they shoot the outside shot when it's there, like now. Bartles missing from three-point range. Loose ball pick up to DePaul. Singer comes up with it. Now it's Cole on the advance. Yeah, nice shot by Watts. DePaul now doing a nice job in their half-court offense. Pretty patient, looking for the good shot. Five-point game. We talked about how they like to shoot three-pointers. 670 attempts from beyond the three-point strike this year. All right. Over 22 a game. That is just unbelievable, to be honest. Shot clock down to 10. There's the uh, perimeter shot missed by Settles. Bowen with a dish to Bartles. Nice unselfish play by Bowen. Hawkeyes 
Cavs back to the seven-point lead. They knock it loose, but DePaul has it. Marcus Singer. Brandon Cole. Macon. Rebounded by Iowa. And as Ryan Bowen clears and Woolridge on the move. No call on the contact. Off the glass for Woolridge. Well, you can see how valuable the point guard is in Tom Davis' system. Woolridge has the ball every time they come up the floor. Good pass. And settles the dunk. Traveling called on Settles. No basket. The Iowa fans unhappy with that call, but they like what they're seeing on the court. 10.58 left in the half. Hawkeyes 24, Blue Demons 13. Iowa has built a nine-point lead, and really by the play of Andre Woolridge, the point guard for Iowa. As he comes on the break, he has made outstanding passes, this time to Settles. Settles called for the traveling. Dr. Tom Davis this morning said, my point guard is very valuable, and he has a good one in Andre Woolridge. He does indeed, and with that uh, walk wiping out that basket, that's the reason for the 22-13 score. Andre Woolridge, 6'1", 190. I was turned it over six times already. The ball throwing deep, but Cole lost the handle. Once again, they threw over the top. They had just what they wanted. They have not handled the ball cleanly. So far, it hasn't been the defense underneath the basket that's bothered the call. Woolridge backs it out with plenty of time. 18 to shoot. Woolridge against Peter Patton. Woolridge has got that good, strong upper body, and he can take it to the basket. Big scoring half for Andre Woolridge. Iowa back, 3-2 zone. Schmidt missing from deep, Bartles the rebound. Bartles is open. And the Hawkeyes come up with it again. Great hustle by Settles, that's his ball game. Attack the glass, set a lot of picks, free himself up. Milan slips the pass inside to Murray, good feed. Iowa dropping back into the zone. Klein Schmidt takes on Settles and one to a foul call. Jeff Settles recording the foul. That's his first. Well, the Paul against his zone is going to have to find ways to penetrate it inside. Kleinsmith that time was smart enough not to go all the way on the baseline to catch it. He caught it about the 10-foot area. He loves to draw contact, get people up in the air, make spin moves inside, go to the foul line. Non-shooting foul to Paul to throw in. Macon. he have got to Patton, and now Kleinschmidt looks in. Kingsbury out on him. Here's Cole. Patton. And it knocked loose. Kingsbury the ball. Glasper. Ryan 13-point lead. Nine minutes roughly left to go in the half. Have not Iowa. been able to find Kingsbury a shot. DePaul doing a good job. Kingsbury getting the shot in close this time for his first two points tonight. NIT action from the mark in the Quad Cities in Moline. 10,800 and some looking on as Klein Schmidt gets the shot in the lane, 44. Iowa. Glasper on the move. He saved the play to Murray. What a pass. DePaul taking time. They roar their approval in Moline. The Iowa Hawkeyes now have opened up the 17-point lead. Glasper tries to split the defense, loses his balance, but he knows where his teammate is. Makes the round the back. Sunbolt, it's a 17-point lead for Iowa with eight and a half left. 
Well, is this how you draw it up in a timeout? <laughs> or in practice? Maybe not, but it works. Terrific effort by Glasper. He saved the travel, that's for sure. DePaul has had some success throwing behind the defense, but they haven't really been able to finish at the basket. They haven't finished, and, and what you're seeing is it's just, it's almost like the ball slippery to them. Silly passes, lackadaisical passes, and you can't do that against this type of ball club. Patton comes to get the ball from Macon. Iowa stays in the zone. They will stay with what's working. They used the zone the last half of this season very effectively. Kleinschmidt strong to the basket, but he got turned away by Bowen. Oh, the uh, Blue Demons want an offensive foul on Glasper, but the call is going to go the other way. Well, Joey Meyer wants a clear out, and I'm not so sure he's probably not right about this one. Glasper pushed the ball up the floor. Third team foul on the Blue Demons, and there you see Montier Glasper. And what he's done this season. Wow. Let's take a look. Free throw. Take a look as Glasper pushes up the floor. He goes up. He's caught. Now Singer looks like he's just going over there. The weak side hand of Glasper cleared him away. Probably not a good call. Joey Meyer has something to talk to the officials about. It. Glasper knocks out both free throws. Patton advancing against the press, but all the time being aware of where these Hawkeyes are. Iowa, not a big team inside, but very active with the hand. Macon draws the foul going up. He'll shoot two. Ryan Bowen picking up the foul. After Sports Center tonight, more NIT action. Texas Tech Red Raiders and the Washington State Cougars live from Pullman, midnight Eastern, 9 o'clock on the West Coast. Making with his first point tonight. Jim Bartles coming back in for Iowa. Ryan Bowen going out. Well, Making another senior for Joey Meyer in his ball club. Has played well this year. 21 rebounds against Marquette in one ball game. The Iowa Hawkeyes jumped in front and they've been increasing the advantage ever since the early going. They were up by 19 for their biggest. Carter. Offensive rebound to Murray. And it's out of bounds to Iowa. You know, the way DePaul's playing man-to-man -man defense, but they are so worried about Kingsbury. Everybody switches or they stay with him. That should free up Kingsbury's teammates. Anytime a team is real anxious and tries to guard one guy, you can find openings in seams. And Settles looking to make the inbounds pass for the Hawkeye. Wolverine left it short, Kleinschmidt. Now Watts. Chris, you got three! Brandon Cole. Brian Bolton has his second basket. Kingsbury. And it's over the top. It belongs to DePaul. Jim, you want to say long shot, but when you saw us Kingsbury, you didn't say long. <laughs> You're right. And you, you know why. We saw at the end of the warm-ups, folks, right before half court, Kingsbury turned around and shot a jump shot. And that is not an exaggeration, about two steps in half court, and he had nothing but net. He does have some range. And then walked off like, I do this all the time. <laughs> And the Iowa people said, that's right, he does. 16-point <laughs> lead for Iowa. Ball going to the inside. Macon gets the hook. It looks like Macon and Bowden can be effective against a smaller Hawkeye ball club if they can get it to him against the zone. There's a foul called on DePaul. As Woolridge was making his move, Watts picking up the personal. 
one thing about a zone defense, if you just pass around the outside, you will not accomplish anything but long jump shots. Someone either has to dribble penetrate or flash in the middle and make the pass. Ryan Bowen returning for the Hawkeyes. And Kevin Skillett goes out. I'll tell you what, Dr. Tom Davis has got some versatility on this team. He's got guys he can plug into different spots. He just made that substitution there. Skillet 6-3 going out of the game, and uh, Bowen at 6-9 coming in to replace it. Well, and they don't really change their style too much. There you see Dr. Tom when he's with Boston College. Same kind of thing. Rotate a lot of players. They'll pressure. They'll push the ball. They'll shoot jump shots. And so he can keep a lot of fresh bodies in the ballgame. As you saw by that graphic with uh, so many players averaging 10 minutes per game. Wein Schmidt. It's Bowen. Watts got an open look. And a rebound to Iowa. Woolrich looked away and bottles the layup on the feed from Settles. Great unselfish play by Settles. He could have taken it himself. He gave it to a teammate who was a little more on balance. A big offensive half for Jim Bartles. The ball down by 16. But there is a long way to go in this game. There's Woolridge. Well, right now it's Andre Woolridge, so whether he takes it by himself or he gives it off on the break. Iowa finds him after the miss, and he pushes the ball. DePaul has yet to stop him. Ryan Schmidt fires ahead to Cole. And he draws the foul on Andre Woolridge. First foul on Woolridge. Woolridge has pushed the basketball all night long. This time he drops it off to Settles, who then gives it to Bartles for an easy basket. Good unselfish play by the Hawkeyes. And now by himself, nobody picks him up. As a point guard, you go as far as the defense allows you. This time it's for an easy layup. Brandon Cole to the free throw line for DePaul. Cole, two of two free throwing so far in this game. He's an outstanding free throw shooter. Oh, he misses the first of two here. Kenyon uh, Murray returning for Iowa and Bowen going out. You know, both coaches this morning had the concern of the disappointment of the players after they weren't selected for the NCAA. But then they have to figure out, hey, we are in the NIT. Both teams thought they had good practices. Both coaches said, hey, but you never know what kids are feeling. Murray underneath, had it knocked loose. Blue Demons the steal, here comes Cole. Curry with the rebound for DePaul. So with the offensive rebound, the Blue Demons another crack at it. Less than five minutes for the half. Iowa in command so far. In DePaul, find a way to get the ball inside. They have some players who have been effective in there. They just cannot get it to them. Woolridge the rebound of the miss by Singer. Kingsbury for three. They've been waiting on that one. <laughs> well, we sit here and the people behind us every time he touches it, they all have three gold cards around this Coliseum as one lands right there. But it's amazing the kid has already the school records for a career and he's only a sophomore. Elsewhere in NIT play. Marquette beats Auburn. Second half, closing seconds. Close ball game working there. Fang Mitchell at Coppin State, another good year for him. Beat out in their tournament final once again. Shot clock at 10. Curry gets the basket for the ball. Brian Curry with his first hoop. Kingsbury again. And on the follow, it's Murray. Iowa has not changed their defense in the last 10 minutes. Watts 
gives it up to Cole. A quick oh, pitch into Bowden, and Brian Bowden has a six. And Bowden barks at his teammates a little bit. I think he'd like the basketball down there. He has been successful, but Iowa has denied him from catching it. Bowden averages 11 and a half points a game. Normally, the Blue Demons don't look to him for the offense. Kingsbury with his second three. I'll tell you what, that's visions of downtown Freddie Brown when he played at Iowa back in the early 70s and with the Seattle Supersonic. This kid can shoot it from anywhere. It's a 21-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Three minutes left in the half. You know, maybe that's why they'll give you two points or at least kind of look at a good two on one end because they figure they can score three on the other. Loose ball to Singer. Watts. And Jermaine Watts has the basket. Four points for him. Settles came up with that lead pass. And then he's called for a walk. And a timeout taken. 2.36 left in the half. The Iowa Hawk, Chris Kingsbury, is living up to his reputation, John. Iowa does a nice job of spacing and doing different things with the basketball. Now they'll set a pick. Watch Kingsley go baseline. Kingsbury, all of a sudden, this is good defense. Marcus Singer knows he's a shooter. You're supposed to get on him. A fadeaway 23-footer. Bang. Kingsbury, Iowa's inside out, 28 points in the paint, 4 of 12. Three-point shooting, Dr. Tom Davis has uh, Kingsbury now heating up with uh, two three-pointers. You know, one thing you'll notice about Iowa, the players know when guys are going to really shoot in the half-court set. They expect the shots to go up so they can attack. Two or three guys really attack the offensive board. They're not big, but they know when Kingsbury or Settles or someone gets in there open, they know the shot's going up. The Hawkeyes have set the tempo tonight. Now they're coming out uh, almost in a half-court trap look. And now Singer hitting the three for DePaul. We saw Marcus Singer practice today, knocking in every shot he was looking at. Joey Byer was smiling about it. Said, I hope he hits a couple tonight. Hawkeyes working that perimeter. Skillet, Carter. Two minutes left in the half. Glasper with Watts guarding him. They'll go a little box set, try to get someone off a of pick inside. And Skillet turned the corner, and the ball is out of bounds to Iowa. Tom Kleinschmidt returning for DePaul. There you see Jim Bartles coming back, Kingsbury going out, and Woolridge coming back as well for Iowa. You know, Joey Meyer is giving Kleinschmidt a lot of rest. Talked about the flu bug that he had this morning, and he has not played well. Just hasn't had the energy, it looks like, on his jump shot to get the ball there. Joey Myers had to shuffle Tom in and out of the lineup just to try to give him some energy. Iowa to throw in again. Woolridge. And the ball tipped away. The DePaul Blue Demons end up with it. Watts. Oh, some shot by Watts and Carter on the foul. John Carter. Terrific move by the point guard Watts as he pushed the ball up the floor. Again, no one really stopped him. He got a good little brush pick right here. Frees the lane, takes it down. Carter draws a contact. Tough shot. A real tough shot. You know, we talked that Iowa doesn't have very much size, but John Carter, he's a big man, 6'9", 330. You know, Carter and Macon. Macon from DePaul, both played junior college together at Southeastern Junior College, close by in Burlington, Iowa. 13-point lead for the Hawkeyes with 1.25 left to go in the half. Remember, DePaul was down by 21 a couple of minutes ago. Woolridge for three. And it's Carter on the finish. Kleinschmidt at the other end, scores a basket and a foul. The ball has been successful. When the ball goes in, Iowa picks up. What they do is get the ball in quickly. Finally, they caught a long one. Finally, they made the play on the other end. Terrific pass. And Kleinschmidt with a chance at a three-point play.
There is the player of the year in the great Midwest Conference. What an outstanding career he's had. Three years in a row, first team on the conference. Trying to connect on the free throw try. And the ball is out of bounds to Iowa. DePaul kids right now look a little frustrated. Uh, it looks like some of the calls they feel aren't going quite their way. You can kind of see it on their facial expressions and the reactions by their bodies. Kingsbury is back on the court for Iowa. Inside it settles. And as he made his move, we get a travel call. Coming up at halftime, Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps. Scores and highlights from around the NIT. NCAA tournament focused on the East region. And we're only about 50 seconds away. You know what, John? All things considered, DePaul's not in real bad shape here. Well, considered they have not played well, and Iowa's played well, and Tommy Kleinsmith still has not really gotten going, and he could. Even though he doesn't feel well, he could emerge this second half. They can get a couple baskets here down the stretch. And on the follow by Curry, a foul called on Iowa. They have been successful at attacking the offensive board, or when they get the ball inside. Another jump shot. Watch the position of the Iowa players. No one's around. Two blue jerseys. They go up. Draw the foul on Millard. Ross Millard, 6'8". Curry, a 71% free throw shooter, and he didn't shoot that one very well. But DePaul as a team normally shoots free throws well, as you see, 72%. Against Cincinnati in the Great Midwest Tournament, though, just 59%. You know, they had a game earlier at Texas where they led by seven with a minute to go and couldn't make free throws. So lost. sometimes they go and sometimes they don't. Lost that game in double overtime, as it turned out, on the road in Austin. There is no shot clock. That's the game clock that you see. We're nearing the end of the first half. Kingsbury for three. Taken out by Cole. DePaul has time. Brandon Cole to Curry. Missed the layup. And the rebound just settles with one second left. He takes the timeout. Well, you can see Kingsbury on the screen. He's not happy. He thought he got fouled, but the mistake he made, he might have gotten fouled. But he stood there and watched the play. DePaul had an easy chance for a layup, and I think Curry lost control of the ball as he went up for the layup. The ball almost went in for him, but it didn't. Coming up tomorrow and all weekend long, our Sports Center NCAA tournament specials. John Saunders, Dick Vitale, Digger Phelps, they'll bring you all the scores, the highlights, and a whole lot more from the afternoon games as well as get you ready for night games tomorrow. It comes your way at 5 o'clock Eastern, also 6.30 and 12.30 a.m. A packed house in the mark of the Quad Cities. Well, an interesting timeout. <laughs> Settles had the rebound. And I'm not sure if uh, he thought maybe more time was there, but they'll get one play, they'll get to do something. This is one of those timeouts that if this game heats up and gets close down the stretch, this could be a factor. You don't have the timeout. Well, really, I tell you, DePaul missed an opportunity. Kingsbury took the shot, thought he got fouled. He just stood there, wanted to talk to the referee, and the Blue Demons were gone. And they had a chance. Curry just lost control of that basketball. If DePaul scores on that play, it's a 10-point ball game. Probably headed for halftime. Let's see what the Iowa Hawkeyes can come up with with one second. Because they've got such a deep threat on the floor, they don't have to throw it inbounds <laughs> very far. Yeah, that's a little unusual. You can try to hit Kingsbury at half court and let him shoot his normal jumper. <laughs> we don't, you don't normally see that. <laughs> see, he's, he's still talking. They're hitting my arm. I don't usually shoot air balls. You see. And it's tipped away, and the half comes to an end. So the DePaul Blue Demons and the Iowa Hawkeyes here in the Quad Cities at the Mark in Moline, Illinois. A 12-point game, DePaul coming back here to close it after trailing by 21. 46-34, the halftime score. Now for the halftime report, let's go to Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps.
Jim and John, thank you. A strange timeout call at the end of the yeah. half. Can't to waste. Paul, 50 years after George Mike and company won the NIT, trying to get it done and, and not really as down, down as much as they could be. Well, I'll tell you what, Joey Meyer did a pretty good job in the end of the half. They cut it from 20 back down to where they are now. But I think if they keep going inside to Bowen and Curry to establish the inside game against the zone, what the Paul needs to do, be patient, get it inside, outside game will establish. But Iowa started the game, went to the press, didn't go full court traps, but back into the zone. The Paul struggled, got up 20, and now the Paul's making a little run, so it's not over yet. Coming up at halftime, we'll update the other NIT games. Six other games in the first round, including Miami and Penn State, a wild affair in Happy Valley. Highlights and other scores we continue. Leading DePaul by 12 here at halftime, but hey, the Hawkeyes were up by 21, so DePaul did a good job getting back in it. They did, Jim. DePaul made a little bit of run. They attacked the glass. They shorted up on a defensive end, and now it's a 12-point ball game, so anything can happen early here. Let's take a look at the halftime stats that we have for you. You'll see that Iowa shot it pretty well. Iowa did shoot it well, and that's what they're known for. But look at the rebounds and the points in the paint. Iowa attacked the glass. They got some easy layups off the fast break. And that's the big story. DePaul needs to rebound. One of the big keys for Iowa so far has been Andre Woolridge. Ten points and six assists. He has done it by himself. He's taken it to the hole, and he's also helped teammates. When he gets on the break, he delivers awfully well. Take a look right here again. All by himself. So we have seen him take it all by himself. When they don't stop him, when they do stop him, his teammates are running the floor and they're getting easy layups. The Iowa Hawkeyes who opened this game with tremendous energy. They have this big crowd behind them even though uh, they're not playing at home nor in the state of Iowa. The, uh, <laughs> the fans drove over from Iowa City and 10,800 plus really behind these Hawkeyes. Well, you consider this. They're having the NCAA wrestling championship back at Iowa City, and they're having the high school state basketball championship. But the Hawkeye basketball faithful are here. It is amazing, and Dr. Tom Davis was telling us earlier today, he thought that's the most amazing thing about this game is that on such short order, they were able to sell it out. In six hours, they sold them all. Super pass by Woolridge to Settles and a foul on Kleinschmidt. DePaul still in man-to-man -man defense, and Woolridge, what you like to do when it's kind of a pick situation is draw the big man out. If they're going to switch defensively on you, or if the big man is going to string it out, take him further like Woolridge. He hooked, made a little hook pass down low. Terrific. Good foul by Kleinsman. Good hard foul. And settles to the line where he shoots 80%. Both of these teams were 500 in league play. Iowa 9-9 nine and nine in the Big Ten. And DePaul finished 6-6 six and six in the final year of the Great Midwest. Good look at Settles. We've talked about some of his problems he's had with his back. They say it is not a disc problem. It's more muscle problems. So Tom Davis said, yeah, he'll be fine this summer, <laughs> which is a little <laughs> too late. 14 point advantage. That's Peter Patton finding a seam and getting to the basket. Outstanding pick by Bowden. Cleared the lane out. Patton all by himself for the easy lay in. Andre Woolrich. Patton guarding him. The tough matchup really for DePaul is Bowden on settle because he takes him away from the basket and can use his mobility to go around him when he wants to. That ball knocked out of bounds by Woolridge. Tom Kleinschmidt battling the flu and uh, well under his scoring average, as you can see. Murray deflected the inbounds pass. Kleinschmidt ended up with it. You can tell on Kleinschmidt's jump shot. Just doesn't have quite the strength he would normally have. Every ball's been a little bit short. Going to have to try to find himself to get in a groove somehow. Good pass. Inside to Bowden. Ryan Bowden has made himself available around the basket tonight. He's got eight. And DePaul has cut it to 10. Good players don't necessarily need to shoot the ball. That time, terrific pass by Kleinschmidt. Settles into Murray. Kenyon Murray off the glass. Eight points for him. Here's Cole trying to beat the press. Takes Bartles to the hoop. And Bartles the rebound. Now it's Woolridge. 
how quickly Iowa gets the ball right back on top of the defense. They put such pressure on you with their offense. Well, the nice part about that, they put it, they take a look at it. If it's not there, then they pull it back out and run a half-court offense. They at least get a good look at it every time. It's something really, if all high school players or junior high college players are watching this kind of game, look what a point guard in Woolridge does. You can always push it. You don't have to shoot it. You can bring it right back out. Oh, my. Kingsbury missing that one from way out near the hash mark. Here's Cole. Mike Schmidt. Everything's coming up short for him tonight. Settles up and under on the reverse. Back to a 14-point lead for Iowa. You know, you mentioned fine school. One of the hardest things about playing with the flu is you just become tired and your legs you don't have. A lot of times you play fine, but you can't do some of the things you think you can do. Nathan with the hook. Five points for him tonight. When DePaul had some success there late in the half, they were going inside. Nathan and Bowden. They're a little bigger, a little yep. more physical than I was. Shot clock at 15. Andre Woolridge, Peter Patton guarding him. Murray. Well, look what I found. Shot clock was running out. Murray didn't really didn't look like he had too much control of the basketball. Still knocked in the jumper. Murray's got 10 points tonight. Carter returning for Iowa and settles going out. John Carter back in the lineup. DePaul down 14. They had it down to 10. They trailed by as many as 21 in the first half. Iowa has started this half in the man-to-man -man defense. They were successful. Oh, terrific pass. And Bowden on the tip. He's got 10. A little pick and roll, and then they back pick for Bowden. Good pass by Pat. Plays like that to give this DePaul team some confidence. Four minutes into the second half. Murray got it blocked, taken out by Patton. On the release, it's Cole, and he is hammered by Kingsbury. Brandon Cole will shoot two. DePaul all night long has had success thrown over the top and quickly. And Iowa has missed, they haven't gotten back defensively. Up the court it goes. Kingsbury tries to make the block. A little bit physical on that one. They, they will call the foul. Watch this alley -oop. Now we will see the end result. There was a back pick. Bowden had picked for Patton. And then there was a back pick and he went off. Terrific play. I tell you what, terrific catch and finish on that pass. Brandon Cole. Four for five from the free throw line. Kim, you get that feeling that Paul has a little bit of confidence going, a little momentum at the end of the first half, and they picked it up here. Can get it to within 10 points as they do, and seems to have a good feel about it. Timeout taken, 15.49 left to go. Here in the mark in Quad City, Illinois, it's a 10-point lead for the Iowa Hawkeyes. We're back, Iowa over to Paul by 10. Here's a particular play, you're gonna see a pick right here and then watch after that starts you will see a back pick put on for teammate Bowden as he comes by watch the back pick here Bowden goes up there's no help defensively this is the man who has to help defensively there's no help watch a pass there's a pick there's a pass terrific catch terrific finish plays like that giving this DePaul team some confidence that we've talked about Peter Patton and the Blue Demons have cut it to 10. And DePaul putting on full court pressure. Andre Woolridge. Patton guarding him. Kingsbury leaves it for Woolridge. DePaul seems much more aggressive defensively. Kingsbury wide of the mark, but Bowen there to follow it in. 
Well, a lucky break again. Not a good shot that time by Kingsbury. He was off balance. He shot it anyway. DePaul lost control of the man. Well, the Blue Demons unable to get that defensive stop they were looking for. Brandon Cole for three. Oh, my. If they would have gotten that stop, right now they're within nine. Warwick had it tip loose. And in a hell ball, it goes to DePaul. Well, DePaul right now doing the little things, except the last possession. Iowa forcing some shots, not getting a good look at the basket, standing around a little bit offensively. Tom Davis trying to insert different players to get a little more motion to his offense. And now Joey Meyer able to come back with Schmidt, Singer going out. You know, and this could boost Schmidt too. His ball club is right back into it. He comes in, he's got a little blow, and he might get himself into this ballgame. He is a terrific player, has had a great year. I would expect some good things in this last 15 minutes. With a hoop, the ball cuts it to seven. Iowa back 3-2 zone. Very successful the first half. Klein Schmidt, Macon. Hands the ball to Bowden. Half shot and settles the rebound. Well, I thought Macon might have had a good look himself. Millar, nice fake going to the hoop. And a foul. Nice play by Millar. They got out on the fast break. A little pump fake. You have to honor the shooters. Millard, another kid that can shoot it. Over 30% from three-point line, though he's a big player. Gets it to, though, takes it right to the rim. Picks a foul. He also said he needs to say hi to his mother in Florida, who is ill. And he said, hey, Mom, I send my love. So we will do that for him. And now he tries to complete on the three-point play. You see his numbers on the season. That's a big three-point play for Iowa. He's another player for Tom Davis that has been sick this year. Iowa now, 1-3-1 one, one, half-court trap. They will chase the basketball. Brandon Cole finding Curry underneath, and he missed on the layup, but he draws the foul on Millard. He'll shoot two. What a terrific find by Cole. Against the trap, Iowa awful aggressive. Watch this. A rifle pass. Good catch. Almost a finish. Strong enough to keep it up there. Didn't quite go. Curry, a 71% free throw shooter. Two for three tonight. Four points for the junior. Curry averaging a little over five points per contest. And the rebound taken out by Iowa as Settles got in front of Schmidt. Switch, switch. Get up. Switch. Oh, Bartles. Now it settles over Macon. Gets the bounce. Settles in double figures with 10. And a foul call on Iowa as Plang Schmidt was working a ball up court. Bartles picks up the foul. Iowa presses right when they make a basket, but DePaul is so effective they get it in quickly and push it up the court. Three team fouls on Iowa, and that's Skillet almost with a steal. He almost saved it in play. Great hustle. Iowa fans appreciate it from this senior. 13 point lead for the Hawkeyes. Cole brings it up, Skillet guarding him. This time Iowa dropping back. Patton. Cole for three. Well, Cole has been the man this half. Brandon Cole with his second three of the game. That keeps the Blue Demons within 10. Cole with eight points in the second half. Here's Bartle. Inside pass knock goes. Patton comes out. DePaul in transition. Cole leaves it for Klein Schmidt. The basket is good and a foul. Textbook fast break. Three on two. Cole again could have had it himself, but gave it to his teammate. And now this might get Klein Schmidt in the ballgame. He gets a layup, gets to go to the free throw line. 
Watch the fast break. It's three on two. Terrific decision here because the top defender's at half court. Now it's simply two on one. You draw the defense, you lay it off to a teammate, the basket, and the foul. Good look by Cole. But really, Patton makes the play work at half court because yep. the initial defender's there. Some people like to keep dribbling. That slows the whole thing down. Schmidt shooting to bring DePaul to within seven. Yep. And a long way to go here on the mark of the Quad Cities in Moline, Illinois. DePaul and Iowa. It looked like a Hawkeye blowout early, but now the Blue Demons are back in it. Millard. 15 to shoot. Walrich. Jermaine Watts out putting pressure on him. Woolridge gets the corner turned and draws the foul. Second one, foul on Watts. One thing about Woolridge at 6'1", he is 190 pounds. He is a strong player as a point guard, and he can use his body to get closer to the basket. Watts only 170 pounds. So if Woolridge gets close to the corner, he can turn it, and now he can use his body and his strength to draw contact. Kingsbury, number 14, back in for Iowa. Bartles is out. Ryan Bowen, number 42, on the floor for the Hawkeyes. And Woolridge gets another. Andre Woolridge with that 10-point first half. Scoreless since. The lead for Iowa is eight. Against the press, Kleinschmidt. Iowa backs away. Jermaine Watts. You got Kleinschmidt and Cole on the outside. Bowden on the inside has been effective. Cole missing for three. Settles the rebound. And Cole took a chop at it. Curry ends up with the ball for the ball. Lays it in and draws the foul. Boy, is that big. Settles didn't see him. Curry makes a steal and then the put back. Take a look. Settles thought he got hit there. Wanted to call timeout. The steal by Curry before he could get timeout. Settles holding his hand. Now has gone out of this ball game. Take a second look. He got hit on the hand. Now he wants to call timeout. But watch Curry. Did not get. Yeah. He's still calling it. And the ball is gone. And Curry with a chance at a three-point play. And now DePaul could cut it to five. Carter the rebound. Kingsbury. Murray. And Murray was out of bounds when he caught the pass. Well, things have changed in this ballgame. Interesting thing you might want to watch. Mr. Bowden against Mr. Carter. Last time down, Carter had the rebound for Iowa and threw a little bit of an elbow. And I think it grazed Bowden's chin. And as they were running down the court, uh, he pointed a finger and said, I'll remember that one. Here's Brandon Cole, a big trip for DePaul. The inside pass stolen by Kingsbury. Up court pass stolen by Watts. Cole off the drive. Bowden with the layup. Ryan Bowden scores, and DePaul is within four. Remember what we said when we came on tonight, John, about senior teams. They start to play as if there's no tomorrow because there is no tomorrow for them. Well, they've done it, and credit Joy Meyer, the first half, they really could have laid down. He had the right mix of players. He had to give Kleinsmith a few breaks. He wasn't feeling well, wasn't doing well. They got it back to 12, and his second half has been all to Paul. He is still mixing his player right. Kleinsmith back in the game and doing well. And that foul was on Cole, and a timeout taken as we see the big play of the game, perhaps Curry taking the ball away from Settles for the basket, the foul, and the free throw. This is Iowa's first appearance in the NIT. DePaul has been to this tournament 12 times, and 50 years ago, Ray Meyer led the Blue Demons.
to the NIT Championship. A man they simply just call coach. Even in his own family. <laughs> there you see it. George Mikan was the star on that 45 Blue Demon team that took out Bowling Green to win the championship. You know, interesting as I look at Ray Meyer doing the radio for the Blue Demons on the other side, Bob Hanson, a former great player for the Iowa Hawkeyes, does it for Iowa. So he's not quite the name or uh, not quite as old as Ray Meyer, but terrific player for Iowa University back in the early 80s. Here's Glasper looking for room to operate. Watts stays with him pretty good. Kingsbury for three. And on the rebound, we have a foul call. It's against DePaul. Ryan Bowden picks up the foul. Kingsbury cannot find the mark, even on an open shot. DePaul doing an outstanding job of pressuring everybody. But Bowden was away from the basket. That's what motion offense will do. He couldn't get back in time. He picked up the foul. Iowa looking on the inbounds pass. Settles brings it in play. It's out of bounds to DePaul. 11-13 remaining, and the DePaul Blue Demons have a chance to cut it to two. Against the press, they're throwing deep for Klangschmidt. And the foul. The basket is good. Woolridge on the foul. They have taken advantage of different points of this ball game at throwing deep. And when Klangschmidt gets it in the open, he is so strong and under control that he can finish. Watch the pass, terrific by Curry. Puts it right on the money, Kleinsmith beats Woolridge, and now watch his ability to just hang strong enough to draw the contact and put it back in the basket. And Kleinsmith makes it a one-point game. Woolridge. Under pressure and Bowden, a rebound ahead to Cole. Bowden Cole with the layup, and DePaul takes the lead. My house, this game has changed. And Big Bowden has been a factor inside. Remember, Iowa was up 21 points in the first half. They led by 12 at the half. Settles, missing for three. And the rebound to Bowen. Iowa needs to hoop this possession. They have been frustrated offensively. They have not shot the basketball well this half. And really, they've been forcing a few too many shots. Andre Woolridge, Ryan Bowen, Kingsbury slips through. There's the hoop they were looking for. Well, you had to like what Kingsbury did that time. Instead of settling for the jump shot, he took it right to the glass. Ten points for him. The ball down one. Iowa stays in the 3-2 zone. Remember, Kleinschmidt, Cole are the outside shooter. Kleinschmidt with a pass off to Cole. Shot clock at 13. Over the top pass and a foul called on Bowden from behind. Brian Bowden picks up the foul. Tough angle pass by Tommy Kleinschmidt. He probably should swing the ball. Bowden had him in front of him. Swing it to the wing, and then you'd have Bowden on the post. Look at the difference we've had. It's been all DePaul since the first 16 minutes of the game. Right now, Iowa the ball, a one-point lead. Bowen, the pass loose, and it's out of bounds to DePaul. It was intended for Settles. Tom Davis not happy. His ball club is just out of sync offensively. Have not passed the ball well. Here's Jermaine Watts. No opportunity there, so he takes it back out. Klein Schmidt for three. Klein Schmidt with his first three of the game, and DePaul leads it by two. Bye-bye, flu bug. And going to the basket is Woolridge, and he draws the foul on the way in. You know, you wonder if hesitants call timeout just because they had the one the first half that they called in one second left. You know, we talked, uh, John, when Kleinschmidt came back. Remember, the rally was already underway when he came back into the game. His teammates picked him up, and that's what you like to see happen because a good player will respond. And this young man is tough physically and mentally. And he is now... 
put it together himself. He's got 13 points in the ball game. Woolridge on the line. One for two free throwing here in the second half. And now he shoots for the tie with 9.30 remaining. What a good game. Iowa pulls even at 66. Boy, this pressure has had no effect this half on DePaul at all. Nope. Make it underneath to Curry. Against the zone, if you find the middle, everybody collapses. Making terrific pass to Curry. Woolridge, Murray. This is John Carter. Andre Woolridge. DePaul's man-to-man -man defense right now is so much more aggressive than it was the first half. Woolridge against Patton. A tough shot. Rebound to Patton. DePaul coming down looking to extend on the lead. And then it's taken away by Bartles. He took it away from Patton. Kingsbury with Cole guarding him. Eight thirty left. Sixty-eight, sixty-six. DePaul. A remarkable comeback in this game by the DePaul Blue Demons, who are playing in their home state, but are definitely on the road. Kingsbury and Cole are going at it, and that started. The foul is on Cole. That started about twelve seconds ago when Kingsbury had the basketball and wiped it away from him, and then passed it. Cole would not allow him to move. Kingsbury was pushing. Perfect, a little push and push and shove it. And now watch, Kingsbury is just gonna try to hook him and go underneath. And they call the call foul. foul. Yeah, they call the foul on Brandon Cole. A lot of times referees will be talking to him and we can't hear anything, obviously. But the referee might be saying, let him free, let him free. One and one for Kingsbury. On the line for the first time tonight. 8.19 left. And he gets the bonus. Chris Kingsbury shooting for the tie. If you're a shooter and you struggle a little bit tonight, this is where you want to be on the free throw line. You make two of these and now your shot's back on as a shooter, you're hot again. Which team's going to execute down the stretch? Both of these teams have a history this year of having problems in close games. Iowa lost four games in the Big Ten by one point. And DePaul, of course, coming off that heartbreaking loss to Cincinnati the other day. Well, DePaul is a veteran club. They will put the hands a lot in the Kleinsmith's hands and let him make the decision, which is the right thing to do. Cole for three. Iowa out on the run. Kingsbury with settles ahead of him. What the dunk! They got it out. They pushed it up. DePaul did not get back defensively. Four straight points for the Hawkeyes and a two-point lead. They're on their feet in the mark of the Quad Cities. DePaul wants the Hawkeyes out of the zone, I think. But they get a shot for Patton. 4-3. Peter Patton. Big hoop for Patton. Does not score many points. He shoots nearly 54% from three-pointers. Doesn't shoot many in the ball game, but that was good. And now it's DePaul coming back. 7-14 remaining. You notice in the last four possessions, Tom Kleinsmith has come out and run the point position. Yep. That's leadership. And now the Blue Demons with the one-point lead. Iowa staying in the zone. Patton, shot clock at 12. Inside pass broken up. Murray a steal. It was intended for Curry. Look at Peter Patton. Deny the ball going to Woolridge. Kingsbury, 4-3. You make a couple free throws, and I tell you what, shooters feel they're hot. He knocked the bottom out of that one. That's the third of the night for Kingsbury, his first in the second half. DePaul taking time. Iowa has taken the lead by two on the strength of Chris Kingsbury, his passing and his shooting.
Jim Durham with John Sunvold. We are cooking in the Quad Cities, folks. Two-point ball game, hot shooting by DePaul here in the second half. And Kingsbury is starting to light it up. Iowa leading by two at 73-71. There's that great shooting by DePaul here in the second half. DePaul has mixed it up inside and outside. They've established the inside game enough with Bowden and Macon in there that has freed up Pinesmith and pulled the bomb away from the outside a little bit. Flying Schmidt leaves it for Patton. Brandon Cole. Flying Schmidt. Shot clock at 10. And a foul called on Iowa. The seventh team foul, it's one and one. Murray picking up the foul. Coming up tomorrow, a very special up close prime time with Roy Firestone. He sits down for an emotional one-on-one -on -one with Olympic gold medalist Greg Luganus. That's tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern, on an up close special with Roy Firestone. Tom Schmidt, one and one. He's hit three in a row from the free throw line. Now he can bring the Demons back into a tie with his second one. That young man would love his season to continue. Oh, yeah. Schmidt with 15 points tonight. Jim Bartles pressured by Macon. Settles. Bowden out on him and now Patton. Guarding Kingsbury who slips free and draws the foul on Peter Patton. Well, Patton a little too small sometimes. If Kingsbury wants to take him, that time he didn't rely on his jump shot. They cleared out the side. Everybody got outside the lane for him. Kingsbury went one-on-one -on -one at 6-5. He just could go over Patton at 6-1, got it close enough to draw contact. Kingsbury, two for two, free throwing here in the second half. To think this young man shot 19 three-pointers, one ball game. <laughs> Nine of 19 against Long Island. Kingsbury adds to his point total. Unofficial total of 18. There's a 1-3-1 one, one half-court trap, and they will just drop right back down. DePaul has handled everything pretty easily second half, so Iowa has just dropped their defense back. There's a blocking foul called, and Klein Schmidt to the line for a 1-1. One one. Jess Settles picking up the personal foul. Settles defensively just didn't get to the baseline quick enough. Smart play by the senior Kleinsman. You attack the outside of the knees of defenders and see if they can beat you to a spot. Tom Kleinschmidt, like Cole, like Patton, Chicago area products. And on the uh, missed free throw, a foul called on DePaul. It's on Macon. And that means two free throws for Iowa. The 10th team foul on Joey Myers' team. Bartles goes to the line. He started this ball game, had eight quick points right off the start. Two three-pointers, had 12 at halftime, still has 12. But he had two quick three-pointers to get the game going and really hasn't been part of the offense since. This is his first trip to the free throw line in the game. Guys by three. 5.35 left. Bartles with 14. This is a big trip for DePaul now as they trail by four. And it's out of bounds to Iowa. Well, and the interesting thing is, Brandon Cole gets a little bit emotional with it, but Iowa really aren't, they're not trying to steal the ball. They're kind of trapping, but if you just throw one pass, they go right back to their 3-2 zone. And now the Blue Demons need to turn it up defensively. 
Kingsbury. In the post. Well, they found a mismatch and they found the hot player. Brandon Cole coming back. It's a six-point lead for the Hawkeyes. At the five-minute mark. Playing Schmidt for three. Rebound followed by Bowden. Ryan Bowden with 14 points tonight. Four-point advantage for the Hawkeyes. 440 left. Settles. Bartles with the rebound. Good job by Bartles. Clears the ball now. Iowa can get an offensive set. See if they can find Kingsbury again. 23 seconds on the shot clock. Woolridge. Pull on him. It settles. And that's a big one. Jazz settles connecting 14 points, 10 in the second half. We've said it before, when settle moves out, Bowden at 6'8", 250, not comfortable to go out there and challenge him. Here's Klein Schmidt. Outside to Patton. Macon throws over the top to Bowden, tipped away by Iowa. Out of bounds to DePaul with 15 on the shot clock. A timeout taken. DePaul faced with another comeback bid. Now they've only got 347 remaining, and they trail by six. Some of the fans here in the mark and the Quad City. Big night of college basketball here. And they moved almost 11,000 tickets in six hours once they knew the game was going to be held here. Of course, the Iowa fans have always supported their team very well. 15 on the shot clock to Paul to come in. Trailing by six. Cole. Oh, what a shot by Bowden. Brian Bowden with 16. Bowden has responded well. He had 19 and 10 rebounds against Cincinnati in the last time out. Four point contest. The ball very much alive. They came from 21 down. They were down 44 23 at one moment of the first half. Had it down to 12 by halftime. They have enjoyed the lead on occasion in the second half. Simmons missing for three. And now DePaul with a chance to cut it to two. Iowa stays 3 2 zone. Schmidt. Cole takes up slack. Brandon Cole, there's another senior who doesn't want to play his last game yet. Well, DePaul has done such a nice job on the offensive end of their patience and getting good looks at the basket. Woolridge. Iowa with a rebound. Kingsbury throws it away. An off the hip pass intended for Woolridge. Well, that's a big mental mistake right there. <laughs> Nothing to do with play on. <laughs> As a player, you know it. As a coach, you know it. Just play on. So the DePaul Blue Demons, who were down six at the last time out, now looking to tie. Flying Schmidt underneath. It's Bowden. Ah! Rebound tipped away. Iowa with it. And a foul called on Macon. Two shots for Woolridge. After Sports Center, more first round NIT action. The Texas Tech Red Raiders. Oh, they have three point shooting fame too against the Washington State Cougars live from Pullman, Washington at midnight Eastern, 9 o'clock on the West Coast. Texas Tech coming off an outstanding game in the Southwest Conference Championship against Texas. James Dickey's ball club will go up and down, they'll shoot it. And they'll chase it. Oh, yeah. Andre Woolridge with a clutch free throw. Tom Davis has his team up by three in its first appearance of the NIT. Woolridge again. 
16 points for Woolridge. It's a 15-point game for Woolridge, I should say, as Kleinschmidt advances. Bowden has been so effective inside on missed shots. Patton, Cole, runs into a posse. Kleinschmidt for three. Left it short, but it's laid in by Bowden. You'd like to say nice pass. I'm not <laughs> sure it was. Dave Woolridge missing on the layup, but tipped in by Settles. Woolridge did it the first half. He breaks down the defense. He draws the defense. He misses the shot, but Settles was there. Patton off the drive, and a foul called. Peter Patton to the line, a one and one. When you see this play by Settles, you'll see that he goes right up and over on Klein Schmidt. And Bowden has to come over and help. Bowden's guarding Settles. Nobody there to pick him up. There it is, easy tip in. Jim Bartles back in. Ryan Bowen going out for the Hawkeyes. Peter Patton on the free throw line. First trip to the line tonight. This is the kid Joey Meyer said, you know, he's a, shows up early, leaves late. leaves late. He said he shoots all the time after practice, but only shoots two or three times in a game. He goes down here trying to get back to defend on Woolridge. Good help by Macon. Two-point lead for Iowa. Settles, Kingsbury against Cole. Now Settles, if they give it to Kingsbury, he needs to clear out of there so Settles or Kingsbury can go to work down low. Bartles for three. Boy, is that big. He started the scoring, and now he gets his first field goal of the second half. Remember, he hit two threes to start out tonight. Iowa by five. And the Hawkeye fans respond. Brendan Cole. 4-3. Christian Bradley may have been partially blocked at any rate. A foul call coming out. And it's two free throws for Iowa. The foul is on Kleinschmidt. Did you see Brandon Cole? He wants a foul from the official. One thing that's human nature, Brandon Cole has been very emotional all ball game with the referees. I'm not so sure referees like that when a player is emotional to them. And that time he did not get the call. The rebound goes off. Iowa takes off and they pick up the foul. DePaul taking time. 39.7 left. The Hawkeyes have opened up a five-point lead. Don't go away. ESPN's presentation of NIT Basketball is brought to you by Wolverine Work Group. Guaranteed comfortable because they work like hell, feel like heaven. And by Quaker State, the intelligent oil for longer engine life. The Iowa Hawkeyes, who had it going early and late, now lead it by five with 39.7 remaining. They've had their support here in Moline tonight. Well, they've had so much support, I probably had 50 Hawkeye fans come up before this game and said, why weren't we in the tournament? And I said, hey, I'm not on that committee. Leave me alone. We saw DePaul out of timeouts. Kenyon Murray, not a good free throw shooter. 59% on the season. Dead center with that one. Here's the crusher because it's still a six-point game right now, two possessions. This is the one that can just about nail it down for the Hawkeyes, and they would move on to take on the Ohio George Washington winner tomorrow. Iowa trying to delay the ball up the court. They knock it loose from Patton, and now the Hawkeyes trying to spread the court and avoid the foul, and Woolridge is fouled by Brandon Cole. Iowa did a nice job with Murray at the point defensively. Just trying to delay time. Patton tried to go by him, lost control. This will give Iowa their 20th win. Take a look. He just loses control. Iowa not doing anything to reach, but they go after the basketball, pick it up, and move it around. This gives Iowa the 20th win. And that is, to me, you know what? That's important for coaches. 
because they always have in the media guides that they've had eight 20 win seasons or nine or whatever and it's an important number they're like uh, <laughs> they like to have that 20 win season we haven't had many of those pitchers with 20 <laughs> wins lately though <laughs> Guys have been outstanding at the free throw line in this game, and they're nailing it down there. So the DePaul Blue Demons will finish up 17 and 11. Brandon Cole missing for three. Patton with the rebound. Klein Schmidt underneath, and Klein Schmidt again scoring his final basket as a member of the DePaul Blue Demons. What a valiant effort tonight by this DePaul team, though, coming from 21 down to almost pull off the upset well you see tommy kleinsman his last game in the paul uniform what a terrific career he'll be remembered by all the depaul fans and really most of college basketball is one of the great players that comes out of depaul hopefully he'll get a chance at the next level he i know he'll get an opportunity 50 percent shooting that's not too bad for a guy who's had the flu eight out of 16. and most of that coming in the second half. Suttles shooting two. And I guess perhaps it's only fitting that Settles would settle the score with 10.3 left. How about that 21 of 22 free throws? That'll win you a lot of ball games. Yeah. That was that jinx, you knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, but a <laughs> lane violation. It didn't work. He's gonna get another one. Ten point three left to go. Iowa going on to the second round of the NIT against the Ohio George Washington winner. Skittles coming in. Settles going out. A, a skillet coming in, I should say. Kevin Skillet into the ball game as you see Jess Settles going out. Here's Cole. Klein Schmidt. I spoke too soon. There's his final basket as a Blue Demon. Iowa throws behind the press. Well, with an exclamation point, what a way to end it. A high-scoring game coming to an end at the mark of the Quad City. Cole on the miss. Klein Schmidt has yet another basket, perhaps, if he got that one away in time. No, it's wiped out. And the Iowa Hawkeyes have the win. They had to come back and get it after letting a 21-point lead get away. 96 to 87, the final for John Sunvold and our entire ESPN crew. This is Jim Durham. Thanks for watching. So long from the Quad Cities.